And so I'm very curious because your your predictions here, I'm going to backtrack a little bit because you hear evolutionists all the time say that the gold standard of science is making testable and falsifiable predictions. And then you test those predictions, see if they come true or not. And so you made predictions that are future. They're not retro predictions, but they're future testable predictions that have been confirmed by the James Webb Space Telescope data. Mm -hmm. And so is this not an example of creationists making testable predictions that end up being confirmed because so many critics of biblical creation argue that we can't do that? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, that's exactly what happened. And it's all documented. You can go back and read the 2022 um, January article, which was written before James Webb had taken any data. You can confirm with Internet Archive that, you know, that's the date. I mean, there's no doubt about that. And then you can confirm and see that James Webb did, in fact, find that. Uh, likewise, with the Doppler model, the Doppler model makes predictions that have yet to be uh, verified um, that will take future James Webb Space Telescope observations. For example, and, and the neat thing about the Doppler model is it makes very specific quantitative predictions. Um, I'm expecting not only to find galaxies at increasing redshifts up to the limit of the spacecraft, uh, so 20, maybe up to 22, a redshift. At that point, the light's very redshifted. Um, in any case, very high redshift galaxies. But I'm able to predict what their angular diameter should be. The median angular diameter should be 0.2 arc seconds. And that's about 10 times smaller than what the Big Bang would predict. So here you go. Here's, a, here's another prediction that we don't have data one way or the other yet. We've only got the data out to the redshifts of about 16 or 18, something like that. But I'm predicting that as we go even further out to redshift of 2022, the median diameter of these galaxies that are yet to be detected in the James Webb Space Telescope, they should be around 0.2 arc seconds in diameter, whereas the Big Bang would have them being around two arc seconds in diameter, a factor of 10 difference. So that ought to, that, that's a huge difference that ought to be very easily measurable. Wow, that's amazing. So I, I'd like to put up a picture here. This is a, a picture from a recent debate on the Big Bang Theory. And I'm curious as to your thoughts on those who are claiming that the data actually supports or was expected uh, based on the naturalistic model. And there's several points here in terms of the farthest galaxies. And I'm curious if you're familiar with uh, the, these points here and, and what would be a good a good response? Like we could start with one. One is supposedly have the highest redshift. And they're basically arguing that this is what the Big Bang model would expect, Dr. Lau. Well, yeah, any any model in which the Hubble law applies, the farthest galaxies would have the highest redshifts. Mm. So that's an example of confirmation bias. That's a fallacy where you say my model predicts X, I see X, therefore my model's right, and you fail to account for the fact that every other model also predicts X. Mm, so okay. any model in which the universe is expanding, not necessarily the fabric of space, but the galaxies are moving away from each other, according to the Hubble law, the farthest galaxies would have the highest redshift. So yeah, they do, but that fits the Doppler model perfectly well. A uh, second point, they have very low metallicity. Yeah, but remember, the Big Bang predicted their metallicity ought to be zero. And there are some of these galaxies at incredible redshifts that have metallicity com comparable to nearby galaxies. There's, there was a study done, uh, something, like, something like finding, finding green peas in James Webb Space Telescope data, where it showed that they measured the metallicity of these distant galaxies and found that they have the same range of metallicity as nearby galaxies. That's what I. That's not what the Big Bang predicted. That's what I would predict. Uh, three, they're time dilated. I don't know if that's been tested, but I would expect that uh, because both the Doppler model and the Big Bang would predict that they're time dilated. The, the The mechanism would be slightly different, but in the Doppler model, it's it's just a relativistic time dilation due to velocity. In um, the Big Bang model, it would be an apparent time dilation due to stretching of space, and so the 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 subsequent peaks of light get, get delayed by the same factor. They predict exactly the same time dilation. I will point out that time dilation argues against the tired light model. So, but it's th those first three, second one's not really, well, it's not exactly true, but those first three are perfectly compatible with the Doppler model as is number four. Um, yeah, I mean, you, you tend to find stars and galaxies in general inside ionized bubbles that can happen. Um, Five, extremely small, massive, and bright. That is contrary to the prediction of the Big Bang. The Big Bang predicted that these galaxies should be low mass. 
and and that they should end at a, a redshift of 14. So this is that is not a prediction of the Big Bang. That was my prediction, is that they would be massive, and they're not small. The reason that secularists think that they're small physically, that they're a thousand times denser than nearby galaxies, is because they're assuming the expansion of space, which creates this magnification effect, which we don't see. And so the assumption is, well, they actually are magnified. They're just really tiny. But that doesn't make sense because we already know they're as massive as nearby galaxies and as bright as nearby galaxies. That's what I predicted. That's the opposite of what the Big Bang predicted. Um, six, oddly shaped. Uh, actually, no, we're finding disk galaxies out there. The oddly shaped, clumpy, irregular galaxies was what the Big Bang predicted, but that's not what we found. We found fully formed, massive galaxies, many of which are spiral galaxies, even evidence of barred spiral galaxies. And then seven, very high star production. Well, again, that's an assumption. Uh, the fact is we find lots of stars in these galaxies because... And, and then the secularists would say, well, they must be producing stars at just tremendous rates. Well, that's that's because you've assumed that they've that they've just sort of formed and at a much earlier time than you previously assumed. And so you have to assume that star formation is much more rapid. Um, I don't need to invoke that rescuing device because I was expecting these galaxies to already have lots of stars because they're massive. So some of those are not predictions of the Big Bang. And the ones that are are things I would predict, too. Wow. <laughs> You're an encyclopedia worth of information, Dr. Lowe. Sorry, critics. <laughs> but you just you just handled all of those. That, wow, that's awesome. Sam, any any thoughts, brother? Uh, no, I not on that. Yeah. It's a technical topic, Dr. Lal, and you're breaking it down for us really good. I mean, this is excellent. So, okay. Uh, I appreciate you. Uh, uh, Sam, go ahead. Yeah, maybe before we move on, is there is there any observable data that the Big Bang just can't, aside from what we've already discussed, that can't account for? Well, I mean, there are a lot of things that the Big Bang, uh, there, there are problems. You'll read problems with the Big Bang that you'll find in secular textbooks, and then there are rescuing devices to explain those. Uh, we can talk about some of those. We can talk about uh, the baryon asymmetry problem, which is the fact that the universe is essentially matter only, whereas if the universe formed from pure... It, the, the idea with the Big Bang is that the universe started in a very hot, dense state where, the, where it was too hot to have matter. And so you just have energy in various forms. And then as the universe cools, it forms matter from the energy. But whenever... It, which we can do in a laboratory. We can take energy and make matter from it. But every time we do that, we get an equal amount of antimatter. Antimatters like matter, but the charges of the particles are reversed. So instead of a positively charged nucleus, it's negatively charged antiprotons surrounded by positively charged positrons, anti-electrons, basically. And um, if, if so if the universe formed that way, there ought to be an equal amount of matter and antimatter. That's the baryon asymmetry problem. And there are there are secular rescuing devices for that. The, the current idea is that, oh, yeah, every, you know, one time in a hundred billion, you just get matter inst instead of antimatter. Uh, well, of course, we've never observed that. Uh, the earlier models of that predicted the proton decay, which has now been disproved. Protons don't decay within the time span that was allowed by that hypothesis. Uh, so that's that's the baryon, baryon asymmetry problem. That's one example of something that the Big Bang doesn't readily explain why the universe is essentially matter only only trace amounts of antimatter anywhere in the universe that are locally produced and almost immediately destroyed when they contact matter. Or uh, the flatness problem, why, why does the universe have just the right balance of mass and expansion? Um, well, that would be that would make sense if it's thousands of years old and it's designed by God, but if it was if it just came about by some kind of accident, that, that's really extraordinary. That's why inflation was invented. That's one of the reasons inflation was invented to try and flatten out the universe. Um, as you as you pointed out earlier, the Big Bang has changed quite a bit from its initial uh, the initial version that was invented back in 1931. You have all these extra band aids that have been placed to, to fix the various problems with it. So yeah, I mean, there's lots of stuff like that, and uh, I've got I've got a list on my website of problems with the Big Bang if people want to learn about those. So it's just the latest one is really devastating because the the data fit the Doppler model so perfectly, and they don't fit the, the Big Bang model at all. That's what makes the latest discovery just devastating is not only does it not only does it argue against the big bang but it argues for an alternative so that's what makes it especially neat and it makes testable predictions amen so have you seen any prominent old earth creationist or even theistic evolutionist scientists engage or interact with your confirmed predictions based on the james webb space telescope 
uh, the silence has been deafening. I, yeah. I have heard almost nothing, um, which is which is interesting because wow. you'd, you'd think that they would at least say something. Um, mm-hmm. I, the, the few that have said anything have said, well, this just challenges our galaxy um, evolution models. Yeah, that's what I predicted you'd say. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, yeah, I get that. They Yeah, they formed a lot earlier, a lot, a lot more star formation than you were expecting. Okay. The, the latest um, data, though, are more of testing the, the idea of the Friedman, LeMay, Robertson, Walker metric. This the idea that space is expanding, and you can try to you can try to patch that by saying galaxy evolution happens in this extraordinary way to to leave no evidence of this expansion. But um, I think that's really pushing Occam's razor to the breaking point. I love the fact that you not only predicted based on a young earth creationist starting point, what the data would suggest, but then also what the rescue device or the responses would be from the, the critics and the skeptics. And that also came true. So from a biblical worldview, you can predict or guess how they would respond. Those that reject a biblical worldview. Yeah. <laughs> the Bible tells us about the universe. It tells us about people. So you can, you can predict yeah. both. You can predict both. <laughs> 